divas. Hold the phones. In today's video, I have a really special treat for all of you. So I have just recently done a collaboration video with the amazing Dan Faber from Dan Faber Vocal Studios in Los Angeles. In today's video, I am going to be sharing this awesome conversation with all of you guys. In this first part, we are going to be talking about discovering your own singing journey and how you can tailor your own unique vocal gift. Remember to subscribe before you leave and turn on your notification bell so that way you'll never ever miss awesome content like what we have here today. As you watch today's video, I want you to think about discovering your own unique journey. Where have you been in your singing career? Or maybe you just enjoy singing for fun. Whatever it may be, how can you tailor your own unique singing gifts? So as you listen and enjoy today's video, do some introspection, just thinking about yourself as well. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. All right. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey. Welcome to what should be a very interesting conversation today. Um, I am Dan Faber of Dan Faber Vocal Studio, and I have here with me uh, Devasha Opperman, who is AKA the Singing Diva. Hi. Uh, Devasha is uh, joining us from South Africa. Um, and, you know, we are, she just reached out to me recently to um, suggest we have a conversation and sort of uh, without knowing anything really about each other, we're going to chat a little bit about our vocal studios and see what some of the similarities and differences are and maybe learn a thing or two um, that will uh, help each other out. Um, about voice teaching. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles, like I said, she's in South Africa, and um, we're just going to see where everything goes here. But, um, but Debasha, tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? Talk to the people. Hi, everyone. So I am the singing diva. I am pretty much new to YouTube. Well, I've been on there for about six months, but I have a long history in vocal training, just teaching and training for many, many years ago. Um, started out in church and the church worship team. And uh, I've also had professional vocal training myself. But I think most of my experience was from there, you know, just helping to teach and train people um, in the worship team. And the rest is history. That's beautiful. And um, I, I love the name, The Singing Diva. How did you come up with uh, that? Well, my full name is Divasha, my first name. So just like, you know, a nickname, people would call me Diva. And when I was thinking of a name for the YouTube channel, I thought it'd be perfect to be The Singing Diva, like how a diva sings. So that's <laughs> what I went for. I love that. I mean, that's literally perfect. Like, I also yeah. went with my name, but my name just like straight up is Dan Faber. So I was like, there's nothing creative there. So let's go with it. But <laughs> Divasha being called Diva as your nickname and then being the singing Diva is literally just so perfect. I love that. And I love that. Like I said, you. So, so for you, it was just just your name going with your name for your channel. Yeah, you know, a lot of my colleagues and other voice teachers that I know and respect in the uh, Broadway community are all just, you know, Chelsea Wilson Vocal Studio, Bay Dean Magazine or Vocal Studio. Um, and so those are two of my personal teachers. Uh, and so I thought, sure, let's um, go with Dan Faber Vocal Studio and not overthink it. it. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I myself also went uh, undergrad for uh, for my undergraduate bachelor's degree was in a vocal music education from the University of Delaware. Oh, and at wow. the time, I was thinking that I would um, be going more into the choral world. Um, uh, lots of choir experience in my life and thought I was going to be a choir conductor. Um, but then uh, during college, I did a lot of musical theater and um, was encouraged to try being a performer in New York City. And so I moved to New York and ended up having a, you know, about a 10 year career as a musical theater performer um, in New York and around the world. And exciting, then I was doing exciting. a show. It was quite um, interesting for sure. I've, you know, had a lot of awesome opportunities to sing and dance and act kind of all over America and uh, across and really all around the world. I've not been to South Africa, unfortunately, but um, I've been to a lot of other places and other continents. Um, 
And uh, I, you know, the life of a musical theater singer is often you do a gig and then you get back to New York and then you try to do some side job to hustle and grind and make rent. Um, and so I ended up, um, you know, I was getting a little tired of the random side jobs that I was cycling through. And I was doing a show with another voice teacher and she was teaching voice lessons in between um, in between rehearsals and after shows and on our off days. And I was like, wait, that is so much more up my alley. I'm a trained voice teacher. Why am I not teaching voice? Uh, so I started my own studio uh, soon thereafter um, and then after um, and I was doing just all in person lessons then the pandemic hit and everything switched to being online and then i started building an online voice studio essentially and that's led me to today where now i exclusively teach online save for a couple of friends that might pop over for a voice lesson but in terms of the general public i just teach online voice lessons now youtube TikTok, and then just do the one-on-one -on -one lessons you know usually over zoom or skype Awesome. So our stories are a bit similar in that because with me, like I also just naturally found that I was gifted in the teaching aspect of as well of the singing, you know, just helping people out at church. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm actually pretty good at this teaching stuff. So let me go ahead. And, you know, and then I started offering lessons and the same thing. I'd have students coming over to my home where I would teach from home and eventually just got so busy. where like from the morning till the evening. Sometimes I was working to like 9 p.m. at night. I'd be busy and exhausted with students. And when the pandemic hit, same thing, ended up having to take the online route. There was like no other option. And then mm -hmm. from there, just, you know, eventually branched out and like thinking, you know what, I can reach a bigger audience with YouTube. So here we are yeah. today. Yeah, it's really interesting, especially during the pandemic. I was before the pandemic, I was almost exclusively working with aspiring Broadway singers, people that were either had done Broadway or big national tours or were just, you know, trying to build their own um, uh, careers in the industry. And they were almost exclusively coming for coachings before a big auditions um, as opposed to just taking general voice lessons. And so once the pandemic came, it was there was, you know, Broadway shut down, all theater shut down. I mean, everything shut down. Um, and so there yeah. were no there were no auditions because there were no shows. Yeah. And so there were no coachings for these auditions. So my whole client base just went away. And so in order to build it back up, I had to just start going online and then was been able to sort of find this crazy, amazing outreach of musical theater, primarily musical theater, lots of other genres, but primarily musical theater singers, um, yeah, around the world. And it's been really phenomenal since. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I've only done like local performances. I haven't went, you know, anywhere like around the world performing, but I found my niche was more in the teaching. So it's amazing that you've also got a lot of the performance aspect as well. You know, being a vocal coach, you've also went out and actually experienced. I think it's important for us to get that feeling of being on stage, feeling the nerves. And then we have more to, you know, give back to our students because I feel like I can actually identify with that and help them with stuff that's actually worked for me to like help me get over nerves and stuff, you know, being in front of a crowd. So I've prepared some questions. Um, maybe you want to go ahead and start with those from um, the first one. We've got about seven here. Let's see how it goes sure, with sure. time. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, the first question that we were going to ask, which we already kind of started getting into a little bit, is just how you started yeah. as a voice teacher and, and, you know, what inspired you to share your expertise on YouTube. Um, and let's specify to YouTube as well, because obviously we're going to be here on YouTube. And um, obviously I mentioned a couple other things, but talk to me a little bit more about how you actually got started and, and what brought you here. Well, you know, like I said, you know, just early experience in church, like obviously I loved singing as a little girl and I knew I was gifted in that. But as I went on, you know, like in years, always being, a, you know, called to the front and the worship team, ending up helping singers and, you know, other people, like training them. Um, with their vocals at church, uh, I realized that, you know, I'm gifted not just in the singing, but also with the teaching. Let me go ahead and, you know, try and reach a broader audience. I think with the pandemic, everything kind of just worked out, you know, everything kind of just flowed in one to the other, because that's how I ended up going online and then eventually looking at a platform like YouTube where I could, you know, just reach a bigger audience instead of working with people locally. That's, that's pretty much it. 
and I'm just loving it so far also, you know, that interaction and getting to be on YouTube. There's so much of potential there. That's so great. That's so great. Yeah. And how about you? Well, yeah. So, um, you know, adding on to everything I've already said, um, when I started getting into voice in general, I mean, really, it, it kind of started in, in high school and, and in the choral world being a section leader running those little running those little um you know sectional outbreaks where it's like get the guys together and do some student teaching there and and like i said i went undergrad for vocal music ed and conducting and choir and all that and so i really loved you know and also singing so much church music as well um I loved the uh, educational part of things. And then when I obviously got into musical theater, found that I was more advanced in my musical knowledge and less advanced in my ability to dance. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, uh, I was good at dancing, but not like them. And so I knew there was definitely a gap and I knew there was definitely a way that I could help people, um, you know, get better at their own musicality, uh, especially those who I found to be, um, you know, much, better singers than I. I mean, it's really um, one thing that I really took away was that, you know, at the time I found when I did my first musical theater, my first professional musical theater contract, I found that singers took a lot longer to learn their music than my fellow music education majors. I was like, God, these guys really can't learn a song very quickly at all. This is terrible. But where they they were then able to take that song way beyond the um, the final product of my peers in the vocal music education realm, they understood how to take a song and really turn it into something so much more beautiful and emotional and powerful than my peers. And so I knew that there was more to discover in that in that realm of musical theater as opposed to just sort of choral singing and that there was something that i was noticing about there something along the way something about the process not just the product but the process yeah. itself that that had to be so fascinating and interesting to um to want to be a part of that to help people really find their way to that next level of actual performance uh, and then youtube like i said pandemic sorry go yes. on yeah yeah i was saying i'm just amazed that you know even up till now, I've been doing vocals for so many years, but it never ceases to amaze me. I'm always learning something new. Like there's all, always more to learn about vocals. And even for myself, just, you know, applying that and then teaching it to my students. So um, that's really interesting. Um, let's move on to our next question. Please. What you, unique approach or teaching style do you bring to your vocal coaching? And how do you tailor it for an online audience? Yeah. Well, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of methods and thoughts and studies and information out there about music education and about singing. And I really find it most beneficial to teach from the experiential self, from bringing what I already have experienced, as well as thinking about what the students themselves are experiencing and not so much thinking of it as this sort of master apprentice type of thing. I think that being this like all knowing, all powerful person that's going to you know bring some wisdom to the children um, yeah. is sort of an, uh, an outdated um, way of thinking of things. Instead, I find it to just be better to just be a lot more human. I think just being a, a person that is Absolutely. on their own road of self-discovery and just, you know, I'm 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 33, but I still I feel like I'm so much younger than so many of my colleagues and peers. And yet I'm so much older than so many of my students. So um, I just feel like there's a lot of life yet to live. And I feel like, um, you know, I'm always learning and I feel like people themselves are also learning and discovering and figuring things out. And I think that music is such and singing is such a wonderful way of storytelling and just sharing one's emotions and um, especially when you think of it from a theatrical perspective and so I'm always really trying to um, connect on a personal level with my students and having them bring their personal selves into their music um, while of course also making sure that there is a lot of excellent um, vocal technical balance happening. Um, I think that, you know, in order to tailor this stuff for an online audience, you know that in a one on one lesson, you'd be able to really get into the unique uh, individual vocal tendencies of a particular singer and address those tendencies and fix those issues and, you know, give the best use the best tools to um, improve their vocal technical um, prowess. However, I think that 
in the wide range of an online audience, there are so many different unique voices, but there are general trends among these voices. There are things that are sort of applicable to all singers. Oh, and sure. so yeah. letting the online content be primarily um, more, a little more general, a little bit more like here are some thoughts about these general um, you know, vocal things that could be beneficial to you um, and more talking about the interest and the humanity and those types of things that I think people find a little bit more interesting and can connect to um, and then encourage them to come in for one-on-one -on -one lessons so that they can get that unique training. Sprinkling a bit of like a, do you sing like this? Maybe this could help, but obviously um, those types of videos are you know, varied and again, a little bit more general and, you know, obviously specific uh, things will help those individual students. But um, overall, I think that um, I think that, you know, thinking broadly helps to create broader content. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, How about you? For me, I'd say my like teaching style is more casual. I like to keep it really casual, but practical at the same time. Like I like to make the vocal training very simple and enjoyable for like the average person. Um, I like to think, you know, vocal training is for everyone. It's not just for people that are really wealthy or people that may be like professional singers, which is the approach, you know, that we, we've always gotten when it comes to vocal training. But I like to make it something, you know, that it's really simple and accessible for everyone. Um, and then it, when it comes to like the online tailoring, I just try to keep my videos like really packed with very valuable content, um, but not too long at the same time because I, I know people's attention spans can be really small nowadays. So I like to keep them in a very like easily digestible kind of format. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're so right on that, especially because, you know, it you go on like TikTok or YouTube Shorts and uh, or Instagram Reels or yeah. insert your your scrollable content source here. Um, but you know there usually are like the, you can watch something for sometimes like six seconds and be like next I'm not into this. Exactly. Um, you know, and let alone you know watching a video that actually is you know three to five minutes. Like you used to think like five minutes is so short, but now it's like no, give me sixty seconds is generally my max that I that I do. Um, unless I'm posting something like crazy ninety seconds. Um, but yeah, even in those sixty second clips, like obviously you're very limited to very succinctly getting to your point. And obviously there are, you can only say so much in sixty seconds. So I think it's brilliant to just be like, what is simple? What is what is something that is what is the what is the heart of what I'm trying to say? Here it is. So obviously we can flesh that out and get a little bit more specific with an individual in a longer session um, or in a longer video. But for the most part, you're so right. These little short yeah. things are going to be really, really useful for online videos and and helping people understand things quickly and just sort of attract them to the other short things. So when you add up all of the short content you put out, all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, there's hours of content here. It's just <laughs> yeah. all sparsed out in these short little snippets. So that's really great. Now, if you enjoyed today's video and you would like to go even further, discover even more about your unique singing journey or tailoring your own vocal gift, you will want to check out the brilliant course that I have put together for you. It's called Learn How to Sing Vocal Training and it takes you through all the way from beginner to intermediate and then to advanced level vocal training. So you will benefit no matter which level of vocal ability you may be at. You can really transform your vocals and build your self-esteem. Details in the description box below. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Dan's YouTube channel as well. It's filled with awesome content to really help your singing and your vocal abilities. So it's Dan Faber Vocal Studios on YouTube and I will have all that information linked down in the description box below. In the comments section, let me know more about your own singing journey. What would you like to share about where you've been and what you've discovered about yourself along the way? Share with us how you are tailoring your own unique singing voice. As always, questions, comments, conversations, I look forward to hearing all of your beautiful feedback. In my next video, we're going on to part two of this awesome conversation and we are going to be sharing vocal success stories 
to really help inspire you and ignite your passion for singing. So you will want to join me in that next video. And until then, my beautiful divas, stay awesome.